Hello everyone, and welcome to the fanfic heaven, so we are back with an interesting movie on what if Naruto mastered Geoquake Fusion. But before we start, I just want to remind you to please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you enjoy my content. Let's start the story. S. Sasuke. This strangled cry left the boy's lips. He caught another boy's head on his hands. Disbelief is in his blue as the sky eyes. His blonde hair covered those cerulean pupils. Cheers fell on his rival. The oh so mighty Uchiha closed his own, red eyes. You Dobi, he coldly said, yet, it spoke a compassion in his voice that only a friend like Naruto can understand. Don't die. Slight breathing signaled his life will be forfeit. My brother, his onyx eye dulled and stared into the shocked pupils of the so called dead last. I need to kill him. The last breath came out of his mouth. You need to kill. Dot him. Naruto couldn't believe it. Sasuke. Sasuke. Of all the people to die, it had to be him. One who was slowly becoming a precious person. That precious person slipped away on the cold ice. A bubbly fiery feeling appeared in his throat. His voice is becoming scratchy and guttural. You bastard. A masked figure can only gasp in shock and fear. At first, he was in combat with the last Uchiha. Then, the blonde boy had to come in his dome of ice mirrors. They both willed to get out, but the masked individual would have none of that. The Uchiha unlocked a power in his eyes. The famed Sharingan, the Uchiha used the last of his power to save his annoying companion. Now, that same annoying companion has this red energy seeping off of him. Haku can only feel the sheer hate directed at him. T this power. He was interrupted as a fist impacted on the mirror he was taking residence in. Fortunately, the masked figure's speed between mirrors made a narrow escape. Now's my chance. Needles of cold ice flew from Haku's fingers. The needles missed as the blonde glanced at them with his red demonic pupils. He leapt away from the sharp objects, spinning across the dome. When he landed, he felt a stinging sensation all over his body. He snarled at the tickling feeling and let out a bestial roar. Accompanying the roar, is a burst of hot steaming chakra that banished the needles sticking onto him. Along with the needles, some mirrors were also shattered. Haku dropped to the ground and tried to get away from the monster. The grip on his arm made the masked boy stay and turn around. The effeminate boy went face to face with the demon and peered through his mask to see the crimson orbs. Not only did he see the eyes of a demon, he felt the touch of one also. The clawed fist went straight forward and sent Haku into a mirror and shattering them all. A piece of a mask fell, as the masked figure stood up. He took several steps back to the edge of the bridge. I'm sorry, Zabuza-sama. Naruto let out another roar as he sprinted to his enemy. The whiskered boy pulled back the finishing blow. I cannot defeat this boy. As the fist neared him, Haku felt a shocking source of chakra nearby. Another, source is weak compared to it but he can recognize it easily. Zabuza-sama. A mirror appeared out of nowhere, and the boy stepped through it. Naruto saw the boy going inside the ice glass, and shouted, You won't escape. The fist went through the mirror, but didn't go inside it. Instead, it broke into millions of pieces. Naruto narrowed his eyes at how his foe escaped. But, he can only gasp in shock as he accidentally leapt off the bridge. Damn it. The blonde shouted as he plunged down into the river. A huge splash came out of the water and soon ripples joined along. If one were to look down the bridge, they would have seen a shadow of a submarine. Zabuza-sama. A cry from the mirror, gave the reaction to everyone to look at it. They see a girly figure coming out of it, and not looking at where he was going. When the blonde, punched the mirror he left in, the world inside the mirrors shook like it had an earthquake. This made him close his eyes and leapt into an unknown destination. He felt like he pushed a body. A cyber haired man couldn't believe his luck, he was just about to end the battle to save his two student from peril. He formed his original technique and used his Sharingan to pierce through the man before him. But the man's apprentice appeared out of a mirror and pushed Kakashi out of the way. Thus, the copy ninja again failed to kill his foe, the demon of the hidden mist. Kakashi tried to put out his jutsu to avoid falling off the bridge. He did the deed just in time as his feet skidded to the edge. He let out a relieved sigh as he straightened himself and turned around. He failed to kill Zabuza and now he has to deal with his apprentice and him. Haku couldn't believe it. 
In her mind, the only thought was to give his life up to save his masters. But in the end, she didn't have to. Now, she has to fight the copy Nin. The fight that would end it all was interrupted by clapping. Kakashi, Haku, Zabuza all turned to who was clapping. To the sidelines, a pink-haired girl and a man with a strafut looked as well. Sakura, the bubblegum hair one, was worried for her teammates and her sensei. At first, it was just Sasuke, the target of her affections. But then, Naruto and Kakashi were just as well important to her as well as Sasuke. The one who was clapping is man of many corporate business. Gato is man who takes money and pleasure from siphoning off villages and towns to increase business and clients. He is not a man who keeps his word if money is on the line. He seems to be the only one there on the bridge. TCH. Looks like the demon's just another worthless puppy, he sneered at Zabuza. Haku coldly stared at him. Don't you insult Zabuza sama, you worthless trash. Gato just humped and smacked his cane on the ground. Oh yeah, I can say whatever I want, you little bitch. This earned a shock face of Zabuza and Haku. That's right. You thought you can hide the fact that you're a girl with that pretty little face. I think not. With this he smacked the bridge again. Haku narrowed her eyes and glanced at Zabuza. Kakashi's dogs weren't on him anymore. She decided to gamble on this and ran to her master. She leapt to him and activated her Hyaden bloodline to make a mirror. Another mirror appeared besides Gato and out came the two people he insulted. Both were exhausted and their chakra were low. Haku tripped as the mirror almost failed due to the extremely low chakra she has now. Gato walked to the girl and caressed her cheek. Now that's a nice little bitch. Haku gritted her teeth and then she made an ice needle without Gato knowing. As she was about to plunge it inside his throat, a hand harshly gripped her arm and another hand smacked her across the cheek. Sorry Nei Chan, it's just business, Nei Chan. The ice ninja couldn't believe her ears at the two voices. She turned to them with a red mark on her cheek. Her eyes filled with betrayal at the two before her. Guzu, Maizu. Both men were her partners under the service of Zabuza. All three served him to the tip. Why? Guzu looked away, but Maizu stared straight at her. Money Nei Chan. This shocked Haku. Money, but under Zabuza it is for the same exact thing. What is so different about now? As if to answer her thoughts, Guzu answered, and for freedom. It was Zabuza's turn for him to be shocked. Freedom, he said in a raspy voice under the bandages. What freedom? Your tools. Maizu sent a fist in Zabuza's direction. Haku tried to intercept but Guzo held her down. Maizu kept punching Zabuza in the face with his metal claw. This is exactly what I'm talking about. You treat us like we're nothing but simple rags. We do not have the same loyalty as Haku. Tears came pouring down on Haku's face. She looked down unwilling to face the beating her partner is unleashing on her master. Gato simply laughed at her expense. This is rich, and I love being rich. He turned to Guzu. Did you place them? The man nodded slowly. The short man smirked and turned to Tazuna. Tazuna, your bridge is done for. Along with you and you leaf ninja. He brought his cane up and sent it straight back down. Seconds later, the bridge started to shake and everyone is trying to find balance. Gato, Tazuna cried out in anger, what is this? Gato simply sneered, you thought I'd let you complete this bridge? No, I had the demon brothers plant bombs on the bridge right when you started construction. The bombs were set off by three vibrations. You see, I plan on what to do. That's how I became the top. Kakashi for one couldn't believe his luck again. The first challenging mission for his genin has become a death trap for them. He shut both his eyes and put his hands on both Zabuza's sword. Sakura, Sasuke, Naruto, I'm sorry that I failed you all as a sensei. Obito, I guess I'll be joining you up there. Probably not, I just maybe get lost on the road of life. With his final thought set, he charged towards Gato intending to end the mon's life. The bridge started to crack and split in half, making a line. Then the half where Kakashi, Sakura, and Tazuna started to fall into the river. Kakashi heard a scream from Sakura. He tried to ignore her as to not feel the sorrow and guilt in his chest. He can only think to avenge her as he brought his sword up to kill Gato. But alas, the copy Nin's luck couldn't be better, only worse. Maizu smirked and charged at Kakashi with glee. 
he jumped and kicked the silver-haired man in the chest to the ground and the edge of the broken bridge. Kakashi grudgingly let go of the sword and it fell into Maizu's hands. Maizu cackled as he spinned the kubikiri and sent in a thrust. Blood splurted out of Kakashi's back as the kubikiri went straight into his abdomen. The silver-haired mon's arms went limp on his sides. Maizu roughly pulled the sword out, causing more red liquid to come out. Kakashi's life appeared before his very own eyes. A tear dropped from his Sharingan eye when he thought of all the people precious to him. Tusan. Sensei. Rin. Obito. Sasuke. Sakura. Naruto. Kakashi couldn't stand anymore. He just tilted backwards off the bridge. One last thought went through his head as he nearly fell into the crashing waves. I'm sorry. Flames erupted from every crevice of his body. The cool sensation though has considerably negated the flames. A red aura keeps coming out of his body. At times, the aura dims and sometimes fade. Then, the aura dissipated, leaving him to his normal state. He takes a good look in front of him. Wide blue eyes matches the water he is currently in. What he sees is a mechanic he never seen, but heard. A submarine. It was fascinating. It was unique. Eyes as almost as big as the bridge, yet twice it's as wide. He would have loved to seen it peacefully. If only he wasn't going to crash into it the sounds of metal being thrashed around filled the river, but not the surface. He landed inside the submarine. His flesh hits the hard surface with a solid thud. The boy groaned when finally got control of himself. Naruto could feel his legs getting cold. He looked below and sees that the room he's in, in the submarine, is flooding. The blonde panicked. E.H. Naruto stood up as to keep his face from inside the water. He looked around room to see if there's a door. He came across into somewhat of a door and a wheel-like thing on it. Naruto scratched his head. He can feel the water coming up to his knees. What do I do? Turn it. Huh? Naruto turned to where it came from. On the corner of the ceiling is a television screen. It shows a woman with messy and frazzled hair. Her sockets were dark, probably from lack of sleep. In her dull eyes though, were eyes of someone caring. The kind of motherly eyes who looks out for her young. I said turn the wheel. You don't want to drown here, do you? Naruto stared at her, before shaking his head. He did what she ordered and then the door opened, letting the water pool in as it was up to his neck. Naruto sighed in relief but remembered to close the door to keep the water inside the room. He turned around and rest his back on the door. He wiped his forehead and decided to check this room out. What he saw, made him realize why this submarine is so big. Whoa, Naruto stared across the ledge to see a city. A city inside a submarine. Buildings, a park, tunnelways made out of plastic. It was almost as grand as Konoha. He can also hear music. The music sounded pretty slow, yet it has a tune at it. Hello kid. He turned towards a TV screen to see the woman again. Naruto looked at her with confused eyes. Where am I lady? The woman on the screen looked at him with a smile. Just then, all the lights turned on. Now the city looks like a carnival. Naruto could barely hear the woman speak as he gapes in awe at the city. Welcome to Rapture. The bright lights almost blinded the boy. It's almost like a carnival from those children's book. When the submarine looks narrow, the city looks vast. Naruto couldn't believe it. He hears the TV woman speak. This is Rapture, a city that used to be underwater. It's now in this sub. The blonde Jinchuriki turned to the woman on the screen. Awe still lingers in his cerulean blue. Hey lady, who are you? The woman smiled sadly. My name is Tenenbaum. I used to be a scientist for the mayor of this city. That was until I realized my experiments and creations were horrible. Something that even demons would think twice about. This caused Naruto to flinch. What did you do? He asked. This woman seemed really nice. She doesn't seem the type to do horrible things. I, she paused, a thoughtful look on her features. You know what, think it's better if I showed you. The TV screen she was in, shut down. Couple seconds later, she could be seen as other TV screens scattered across the city, were turned on. Come this way, you know, I never got your name. Naruto smiled and scratched under his nose. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. Believe it. This caused the woman to smile with him. Naruto Uzumaki. Well, Naruto, 
Please follow the TV screens that have me on them. They will lead you to my lab. There I will show you what I've done in the past. As well as a gift, if you would call it that. The blonde raised an eyebrow, but his smile widened at her words. A gift. Nice. Hey, thanks Oba-san. He used his recent skills of tree climping to jump across the city and swerve through. These actions surprised Tenenbaum. This boy. Dot the gift will help him greatly. She muttered to herself. The number one hyperactive ninja arrived at the lab. When he enters, he looks around in not awe, but slight horror. There were tanks across these corridors that seemed to go on forever. Inside these tanks, were these nasty, disgusting slugs. They exhumed a dark brownish green gas every once in a while. Between the corridors, were lab tables. On one of them, is a little girl. Judging from the girl's shade of pale and the amount of blood around her, it can be safe to say that she is no longer among the living. Do you see Naruto? Do you see the sins that I have done and created? The woman's voice was heard, but cannot be seen. There are no television screens, from what Naruto can see. Naruto, follow my voice, please. I'm sure you have more questions. This caused Naruto to snap out of his trance and nod. He walked through the corridors. The slugs seemed to have taken notice of him and every one of them started to jump at him. They ineffectively failed, as they were stuck in glass tanks. The ninja jumped when the slugs tried their assault. Some of them developed teeth, when opening their mouths. This quicked the pace Naruto was going at. When he reached the end of the corridors, he sees the outside of the sub through a glass wall. He sees some fish, as well as the bridge's beams, Tazuna made. In front of the wall, is a table, with three, different colored syringes. Above the table, on the ceiling, is another TV screen. This one turned on, revealing Tenenbaum. As you can see, these are my experiments. These slugs contain stem cells called ADAM. This ADAM gives amazing properties to us humans. But, the side effect was mental and cosmetic damage. It is what gave the extinction of the citizens of Rapture. They became as disfigured as the undead, and their only mindset was to kill and harvest ADAM. Chu then found out, that through regurgitation and lining of the host's stomach, ADAM can be doubled or tripled. That is what became the use of little sisters. The little sisters are orphans who can have ADAM in their bodies. But as it turns out, they became in what is a symbiotic relationship with the slugs, damaging the bodies. This, is what led me to Abaddon science and its evils. The blonde took this all in. It was hard to understand for him at first, but he can pick out the little things he can understand and form together an easy comprehension. Then he asked a question, you said that the citizens of this city became extinct. What happened? The answer to that question, is Bioshock. An incident I like to name. The incident happened because of three men. Andrew Ryan, founder of the city, Fontaine, who tried to take control of the city, and then. Jack, the man who ended the city. Andrew Ryan and Frank Fontaine were in kind of a secret civil war. The war ended, when Ryan, killed, Fontaine. Years later, Jack arrived, when his plane crashed. He then met a man named Atlas, who wanted Jack to rescue his family and get out of the city. Because of the disfugured people called Splicers. But then, Ryan killed Atlas's family. Wanting revenge, Atlas asked Jack to kill Ryan. Jack did so, but then, Atlas revealed to himself as Frank Fontaine. He plotted to take over the whole city, when Jack was born, in rapture. Jack seemed to have been to follow anyone's orders by the the saying of, would you kindly. When Jack was about to be killed, he was saved by a little girl, who led him to a secret location, where he met someone who removed the voice command. That person was me. During his journey, I asked him to rescue the little sisters by removing the slug with a special, something. He could have harvested them, obtaining more ADAM to help his, special powers. But he chose to help them, which I was glad for. To say my thanks, I helped remove the voice command, so he cannot to do any bidding from the words anymore. He killed every splicer and fontaine in the process, freeing himself and rapture from his control. I, along with some little sisters, helped him build a mini sub to get him to where he wants to go. He took with him some little sisters, in which they all lived normal lives. Jack, died, but the little sisters he rescued all were by his side. Naruto, 
who sat on the floor during her explanation, can only look wide-eyed at the history of this city. But another thing lingered in this mind. How did this city became into a sub? That answer to that is Bioshock too. Wow, big daddies are awesome, I guess you can say that. The blonde sat throughout the whole story. About big daddies, the first one ever, and how it in its tremendous battle with the first big sister, destroyed the city. The big daddy felt sorrow at this, and its goal was to rebuild the city. With the little sisters and their big daddies, they built a giant submarine in the city. Then, the big daddies all shut down, forcing the the first one, grand daddy, to take care of the little sisters doing the same thing Jack did. The government of this other country called, the United States, saw how the people reacted to the grand daddy and took him for experiments. Tenenbaum, unluckily, happened to be the scientist that worked on it. She left as soon as she could, and left the government and society, to inside the submarine, Rapture 2. Naruto stood up, his buttocks sore from sitting too long. He then remembered the syringes as they were right in front of him. Hey Oba-san, what are these things? The woman on the TV screen smiled. Those Naruto, is the cause of Jack's and Grand Daddy's special powers. As well as some splicers. These syringes are called plasmids. Each syringe is different as they give you different alterations of your chakra. These are the gifts I bestow onto you. This made the young ninja gape in surprise. W what? Really? Thank you so much Oba-san. He started to jump around and dance, making the woman chuckle. But then, he stopped and suspiciously pointed a finger to her. Why are you doing this? This question made Tenenbaum smile with utter sadness that makes Naruto regret his question. It it's because, I, I am dying of old age. Her answer shocked Naruto. The blonde couldn't believe her. No way, you look like you're 30 years old. Tenenbaum just kept smiling. Her eyes were filled with years of pain and regret. It's because of the ADAM. I took so much in that I somehow stayed the same. Truth is, I am in the hundreds. How do you think I lived all throat Jack's life? The reason that I give you this is because you give the same feeling Jack did when I first met him. That you would cleanse the world of its sins, so no one will endure what I have done. Naruto just stood there, his eyes in disbelief and bit of sorrow. Here was a woman who treated him indifferently and hoping that she somehow becomes the mother figure in his life. To hear that she dying just when he met her. I. He looks up and nods. I will do what you wish, Oba-san. He smiles his fox grin. I'll cleanse the world of its sins. The woman nodded as well and looked down. All right. Let's do this quick. Here is the explanation of each syringe. The one on the left is the electro bolt. You will be able to shoot out electricity out your fingers. The middle is the cyclone trap, which enables you to set out small trips. When you enemy steps on you trap, they blow sky high. The one on the right, is a prototype. Never been used or experimented. This is called the Geo Quake. It gives you the power to make quakes. It has a radius effect, in which you can make an earthquake if powerful enough. Or it can have a single effect, when make contact with another, you will shake them with an intensity of an earthquake. The ninja didn't know what to think. All of them interested him already. But he knew he had to take one, which is the logical thing to do. He stared at the electro bolt. Lightning. That is pretty cool. But, it's so, simple. Then, the middle, cyclones are definitely my thing. Yeah. Dot but traps are also not my thing. When he looked at the last one, Geo Quake, something inside his chest tightened. What is this feeling? This one seems so special. Earthquakes are cool, and it's better in the long run. I wonder how you can shake people as well. Yosh, this one. He reached out his hand to grab the prototype. Tenenbaum watched as he reached for the plasmid. He's honestly going for Geo Quake. I knew there was something right about him. Maybe he can cleanse the world. When Naruto grabbed the plasmid, he heard Tenenbaum instruct, okay. Now inject the plasmid into your wrist. As it is your first plasmid and your body never suffered any biochemical changes, you will suffer an amount of pain and probably black out. The blonde nodded and raised the plasmid to stab. And remember, do not take any after this for about two months or more. Having too much plasmids will cause you to become a splicer. A nod confirmed that he heard her, in which she said go ahead. He felt it prick his skin and winced a little as it entered a bit. 
Not knowing what to do, he looked to the TV screen for help. Okay, now push in the ADAM. I hope this goes okay. She adds an afterthought as she sees the boy pushing in the syringe. Everything went smooth as planned. Naruto sighed in relief as he took the syringe out. Honestly, he doesn't feel a thing. He figured it might have something to do with a certain special beast. He looks at his hands, and sees that they are brown like the soil. Also he sees some cracks in them as well. When Naruto put down the syringe, a huge rumble took place. What the hell? He looked up to the TV screen and sees it blank. Oba-san. Something then catches his attention which he turns it to. His pupils shrank in the amount of horror and shock in his chest. Through the glass wall, out the blue waters, by the collapsing rubble from the bride, is his teammate, Sakura. She looks to be struggling and trying to swim up, but couldn't as she doesn't know how. And no, he muttered as he stared at the pink-haired girl. No, he climbed the table and started pounding on the glass, trying to break it. Sakura-chan, Sakura-chan. The said girl just kept on trying to swim, but it was futile. Bubbles came out of her mouth as she chokes on the water. Naruto kept pounding and pounding to save her, but that was also futile. Tears dripped out of Naruto's eyes as his screams carried on. Finally, Sakura Haruno, witnessed by Naruto Uzumaki, died in the depths of the ocean. Sakura Chan, Naruto yelled out one final shout to her, not caring if she or anyone would hear. He dropped on his knees, his arms fell limp, and his eyes glazed over below. I wasn't strong enough, the blonde muttered to himself. He narrowed his eyes for a second. I wasn't strong enough. He looks to the right, seeing the cyclone trap. I wasn't strong enough. He rambled as he crawled to the plasmid. He grabbed the syringe and raised it up. So I. He plunged it down his wrist screaming. I must get stronger. Pain came this time when he plunged the ADAM. This made Naruto scream while gritting his teeth. He took the needle out and threw it to the side. Sweat came down his head as it literally poured off him. Naruto closed his eyes and sighed. He opens them and looks up again. Anger now fills the chest of Kyuubi container. It swelled up in his throat as he just yells in agony at the sight before him. Hitaki Kakashi, witnessed by Naruto Uzumaki, has died in the depths of the ocean. Blood leaves a trail all the way up to the surface from the copy nin's chest. Naruto shakes his head and screams his pain and sorrow. His whole entire team, dead, a group who he might have finally gotten along with, dead, and the only thing alive, dot him. Naruto reaches out to the final plasmid, the electro bolt. He raised it, he plunged it, he pushed it, and extracted it. This time, what Tenenbaum said, about the pain will lead Naruto into a state of unconsciousness. She was right. Hot red and intense chakra seemed to geyser off of Naruto as blood-curdling cream came out of his mouth. Electricity, wind, and pebbles circled around his hands. The slugs that carried the ADAM were out of control. Cracks started to develop on the glass wall, but it can hold its ground. Skin starts to heat up and eyes glow the orange-red of a demon. The Junchuriki screams his final one, before delving into the ground, head first. As soon as that happened, time slowed. Drip, drip, drip drip. It was amused, amused by it all, everything was just so fucking funny to this being. Nothing can ruin its fun day. A smirk that only belongs to a certain extinct clan on this creature's face. Eyes just seemed to swell up in pure wicked joy at the pain of the boy in front of it. Said boy, blonde and all, is screaming obscenities as everything around him went in full chaos. Boulders and a cyclone circled around his body. Lighting strikes appeared from one wall to the ceiling and floor to another wall. Cracks formed inside the rooms and even the air itself. Grr. Fuck. Fuck. Shit. Fuck. Shit. Fuck. Naruto yelled out the last part as the boulders and the cyclone just shot out in different directions. A crazed look adorned in one of Naruto's eyes. A smirk curled up on the side of his lips. Instead of whiskers, he now has cracks instead. Bits and pieces of his face falls off like dust whenever he moves his head. He conveyed his surroundings. Where? He muttered. Where the fuck am I? He screamed in a shrill voice. After that, he just cackled and clutched his stomach. He then looked without turning to a pair of big and giant red eyes that is looking on at him. Wah! 
The red eyes just looked at him. It just kept looking at him with an amused expression. Like watching to see if a one-legged dog can swim. Naruto just raised an eyebrow, but kept his smirk on. Crack. The blonde cracked as his neck to the left. Fuck that is good. Don't you agree? He asked the figure behind the bars. The figure only bared its teeth in a smile, revealing humongous fangs. Crack. The red eyes didn't seem to listen. But then, its mouth and eyes tilted. See, that's better. The blonde Jinchuriki just signaled it to come towards him. Why don't you come out here? Let me see your face. Eyes and mouth stayed still. Stayed like that for about 15 minutes, but Naruto kept signaling it. The figure relented and soon, what was black of shadows, is now red from fur. The figure turned out to be a giant fox. Unholy fuckfaces. Shit, you're ugly. If the fox felt insulted, it did not show it. Oh, don't be that way. I can make it up to you. What do want? Silence. Well, fuck you too. Naruto said happily, ignoring the fact he kind of insulted the honored foot tall fox. The blonde just turned around, scratching his chin. Hum, a fox like you and an ass like me. That's a good deal. He turned back to the fox, hands on his hips. Well shit, looks like this is the start of the worst friendship ever. What you say? He extended his hand out to the fox. Deep chuckles filled the entire room as the fox turned around to venture deep within the recesses of his cell block. Naruto just tilted his head and shektratched the back of his head. Well, glad you agree with me. The blonde squinted his eyes and smirked even wider. Bitch, outside of the depths of the young boy's mind, a horrible sight is welcomed. One would be sick at the display of all this abominations on this defenseless young kid. The sight. A surmountable amount of ADAM slugs are having an orgy of a feast. Their food is the young blood that is just spewing out red chakra by the seconds. The boy's flesh is being ripped apart by the spiked teeth of the slugs, yet his body keeps getting repaired the minute it gets injured enough. Also, the boy is almost naked having the slugs having their tummies filled with orange fabric. You can see the crimson red life energy having particles coming out of the red chakra skin around the boy. These particles are somewhat entering the slugs through little tiny holes on their backs. Soon, these particles started to double, then triple at a fast intense pace. Then, beams of chakra started fly off and hit the walls firing them up. Finally, a huge catastrophic crimson explosion occurred and the disgusting slugs flew off the boy. Some sticked onto him with his teeth. The boy looked up to see the reflection in his mirror with a smirk. His eyes have a redness to them. Not only the pupils, but the sides of his eyes are red as well. On his cheeks were supposed to be whisker marks. But instead, he has three jagged cracks on his face. It is the look of a manic. It is the look of a splicer. It is the look of Naruto Uzumaki. The blonde just had his smirk, which will probably stay there forever, and touched the glass on his reflection. He seems to have ignored the slugs on his body. So ugly, he says as he turns around nods his head. Much better. Naruto just sniffs the air and licks his lips. What's this? He asks himself. He looks down and finally sees the slugs eating away at his flesh. This brought hunger to the boy's eyes. Oh yummy. He takes one slug off his arm and faces it to his face. The slug started squirming around in his hands. A large crazy smile on his face. Come to daddy. He brought the slug to his mouth. It slid inside and kept moving around but to no avail as Naruto is shoving the thing. Slime from the slug dripped down his mouth. MGMHHGM. Plop. Gulp. That was delicious. A face of ecstasy came onto his face as he looks at all the slugs in the room and on his body. Oh yes. You guys will satisfy me right. His only answer were the shrieks the slugs gave. The blonde nods and just narrows his eyes. He feels something from his hands. It felt. A bit soft yet hard. Like rock. The boy looks down and sees his hands. They looked way too tan and the fact that there are cracks on them. Also, pieces of his hands were starting to crumble, but more kept its didn't really need to smirk as he was doing it already. He then stares at a slug on his body. He picks this one up, but doesn't eat it. Instead, he sent pulses up his arms. The pulses started to shake and soon enough both his arms and the slug started to shake in unison. Naruto moaned as the feeling came to him. 
The vibration from his arm really felt like bliss. Then, he looked at the slug. Instead of squirming, it was actually in peace. It probably felt good. Naruto cackled at the thought of a slug actually being calmed down like a pet. A pet sounds like a good idea. He stared into the slug's little black eyes. So, wanna become my bitch? The slug didn't answer or shriek. Naruto just shrugged and said, well, bottoms up. He opened his mouth for another slimy treat. But then he paused, his eyes in fascination at what is occurring in his hands. The slug was shrieking this time, but the thing that caught his interest was that the slug was transforming. First, its size was getting a bit larger and fatter. Its skin was turning into a dirt peach. Its black beady eyes grew bigger and is changing into a sickly yellow. Cracks began to form on the slug itself, which looked like his whiskers, and connect each other. One, bumps also rose from its back and then became like mushrooms without the top. Its shrieks calmed down and soon low rumbles replaced its sounds. This really made Naruto's eyes widened in excitement. All thoughts of eating the slug vanished within an instant. He thought back to the prospect of keeping a slug for a pet. Now it seemed like a great idea. Crack. One word was what he said to the slug. That's your new name. He realized that his hands were still vibrating, so he sent pulses to negate each other. The slug just stayed in his hands, quiet as an obedient pet. But, Naruto couldn't think of a place to bring the pet with him. Then, he cracked his neck. Ooh, bingo. With a revelation upon him, he now knew the perfect place to keep the slug. He grabbed the slug and then stuck the slug's mouth on his bare chest. Future note. Get some clothes and a slave. Hmm. Hey whore. Any tips? That's why you're my best friend. He happily thought to himself and his furry friend. With a goal in my mind, he set off to look around in the sub. But before that, he looked at the normal slugs on his body. Oh yeah. The norms. I know just what to do with you guys. With that, he claps his hands and rubs them together, his tongue smoothly running around his lips. Itadakimasu. At the same time our blonde hero is in his gorge fest, another disgusting display is being shown. This one is being far more cruel and far more horrendous. And worst of all, the victim is an opposite of an insane maniac. A pure soul. A beauty of snow. One who avoids killing when killing is life in her profession. But this soul is now stained. The snow is now bathed in something far worse than blood. One who avoids killing, couldn't avoid this worst sin of all uncommitted by her. Haku repressed a cry from the pain she was feeling. The treatment she received is far worse than her master's. All because of her gender and looks. Worst of all. The worst in her mind. Was the single fact that her master. Her Zabuza-sama is watching this, no more than a few feet away. Helpless and bound, the man emotionlessly stares at this unholiest of sins. He was tired. Tired of yelling. Tired of the empty threats he screamed to the heavens. Tired of watching. But if he didn't watch, they would send her to Gato. And he knew that was much worse than this. And so this continued, until every last man was filled to the brim in their animalistic tendencies. Then, all of them clapped their hands, further ridiculing the broken girl on the floor. They then started to jabber, until a man on the wall who watched the whole thing called out, All right. Maizu looked around the room and smirked to Zabuza. He pointed to his ex master, who was bound up in chakra draining chains. Take this trash and throw him back to the shit pen. He looked back to Guzu with a smirk, but his brother just shook his heen in disappointment. Maizu frowned and just glared at Haku. An evil idea forming in his mind just when Zabuza was out of the room. Boys, I think Gato needs a new toy. Miles away, in a ninja village of Konoha, an old man looks at his desk with such worry. One would think he sent his grandson to an S-rank mission. But then again, that is exactly what happened. The Hokage sighed as an image of Naruto appeared in his mind. A week before, he received a letter from Kakashi that the C-rank mission bumped up into AA-rank mission. Apparently the client lied, and now they were a ninja after him. Kakashi also said that his team would do just fine. But, the Hokage knew better. This was AA rank mission. One for Junin and Anbu. Not even Chunin were expected to let alone survive. So his decision is set. He sent in his secretary. When she arrived, he said to her. Get me Anbu squad 6. 
The woman nodded and left the room. The old man sighed and leaned back into his chair. With these reinforcements on their way, his worry was put at ease for the moment. Little did he know, Anbu Squad 6 had a thing for demon hunting. Tober, 85, I am near Japan, or so my radar says. Can't trust technology these days. I see the harbor, amazing fish, and what seems to be an incomplete bridge. But what's even more amazing is that they're these people that are walking on what? Boom. Boring. Naruto threw the record tape at the wall. Honestly it piqued his interest, but he just wanted to break something. He is now in Tenenbaum's room he guesses. But the proof might be that the owner of this room is on the floor with her hand over her heart. Her face in eerie silence, the eyes now true to her pale color. But Naruto didn't really care. Nor does he even remember the woman. All he knows is that these new threads were pretty classy. But this is Naruto's mind we're talking about. The clothes are the opposite of classy and style. The only good one is his shirt. It was yellow shirt with frills around the edge of the sleeves. But Naruto put an end to those frills with a simple kanai, though his last one. Over the shirt, is a raggedy brown cloak. There were patches missing and spots of dirt on it. He wears a blue tight jeans and this one also has holes in it. On his feet are a pair of shoes. He used his kanai for whatever reason and just ripped the tip of the shoes so his toes can show. He also thinks that his headband looked pretty damn ugly and put it on the dead Tenenbaum's head. All in all, he looked like a hobo ninja. This made Naruto smirk at the thought. He looks around the room. Simple. Like his old room in Konoha. Wonder what those lovely chaps are up to. Naruto just shakes his head in boredom. He groans and just flops onto the floor. He looks to his right and stares straight into the corpse's eyes. In this moment, he remained surprisingly calm. Oba-chan. Another voice rang out into his mind. This one is not scratchy nor deformed in any way. The blonde ignored the voice in his mind. All he could do was act. He pooched his face forward and closed his eyes. His lips connected with the old woman's forehead. Then. Flash. Tenenbaum just kept smiling. Her eyes were filled with years of pain and regret. It's because of the ADAM. I took so much in that I somehow stayed the same. Truth is, I am in the hundreds. How do you think I lived all throat Jack's life? The reason that I give you this is because you give the same feeling Jack did when I first met him. That you would cleanse the world of its sins, so no one will endure what I have done. Naruto just stood there, his eyes in disbelief and bit of sorrow. Here was a woman who treated him indifferently and hoping that she somehow becomes the mother figure in his life. To hear that she dying just when he met her. I. He looks up and nods. I will do what you wish, Oba-san. He smiles his fox grin. I'll cleanse the world of its sins. Bang. Eyes snapped open. His lips parted, and a smirk fully pasted on. To cleanse the world, of sin. An image appeared in his mind. This image contained a person. His next objective in life. To kill this sin and free the world. His mouth opened and screamed out the target's name. Gato. Hours later, on the shores of Wave Village, couple of kids were sneaking out to play. Ever since the incident on the bridge Tazuna was building, Gato put a more restricted control over the village. About half the village's population were cut down on the Wave Massacre on the bridge. Inari, son of the village hero Kaiza and grandson of the deceased Tazuna, had rallied the villagers to defend their hometown and help Team 7. But things went way downhill as Team 7 were nowhere in sight and Gato was there with just two ninja. What really fucked their ducks was that the bandits were behind them the whole time. Thus, resulted in the wave massacre. Now, mercenaries patrolled the village, cutting down as many men, women and children as much as they want. They started to enslave the women for their own pleasures and the children to do their work. In a few months, the village would become a ghost town, sapped by the greed of Gato. The kids started to throw sand at each other, though trying to stay as quiet as possible. One kid then heard something. Hey guys, shish, I think I hear something. The other kids stopped their game and stayed quiet. Then they heard it, something watery. The they looked to the source and it was from the water. There are bubbles coming from it. What is it? One kid asked. Another kid smirked and pushed the other to it. Why don't you check it out? The kid who got pushed just glared at the bully, wondering why they are friends with him. He just walked carefully to the bubbles. 
his fear increasing in a gulp here and there. When he was about to go into the water, the bubble stopped. The boy raised an eyebrow, but sighed nevertheless. He turned around with a smile. It's nothing. It's probably just a splash, shark. The other kids looked behind the boy to see in a boy splash from the bubble area. His appearance was scary and their temptation to run just reached the peak as they watched the boy bear his elongated fangs. His yell also caused the kids to run their legs off. With the kids gone, Naruto got out of the water. His clothes were soaked, but he didn't mind at all. He just walked up the beach and shook his head of the water. He wonder if the sub would sink when it has a hole in its hub. Oh well, sub should have taken it like a man. With that thought, he heads to a couple of mercenaries that were grabbing the young kids he scared away. Hum, those guys seem like nice young fellows. Excuse me, the mercenaries and kids turned their heads to see a hobo coming to them. The hobo had his friendliest smile on. This smile made the kids almost shit their pants. I was wondering where I would find this gato. He seems to be such sweet thing. I need to give him my thanks. One mercenary, with a scar under his eye just tilted his head by his spear. What, you want to meet Gato? Yeah right, now get over here, you seem like a hard worker. He finished with a disgusting smirk. His buddies also smirked as well. The blonde just giggled, he then snickered. Another mercenary, a pudgy one yelled at the boy, hey. What the fuck is so funny? He was ignore as the boy laughed harder and harder. The scarred mercenary yelled, let's get I am and fuck him up. The mercenaries charged, waiting to unleash their weapons at the boy. The blonde just kept on laughing and then his laughing grew so loud it stopped the mercenaries in their charge. Ah ha 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 Naruto's face was the complete epitome of insane. His eyes now bloodshot and his cracks seemed more sinister. His mouth was curled up into a wide smile showing the sharp teeth which is covered in dry slime. The blonde then walked to the mercenaries and held his hand out to the one of them. The one he holds out to just smirked. What's this kid's playing? The mercenary then decided to have a little fun and took the boy's hand. Then, the mercenaries and kids alike had to hold their laughter. Naruto and the mercenary were dancing. Right out on the streets of the village. The mercenary got his sword out, ready to slice off Naruto's head. In a moment, Naruto stopped and said, you killed it. He grabbed the mercenary's face and put his face in front of the mon's face. Both hands on head, he sent pulses to his arms and then into the mon's head. Hey kid what are you, oh, that feels good. The mercenary's eyes rolled up and drool came out of his mouth. Naruto's smile grew wider, and then screamed, overdrive, splat. The kids and mercenaries who were trying to hold their laughter, now are trying to hold in their stomachs. In Naruto's hands, instead of a head, were nothing. The rest of the mercenary dropped down to the ground. Naruto chuckled as he dropped both hands behind his sides. Soon, he raised another hand to another mercenary. This one can only gulp in fear as Naruto said, now. Crimson red flashed in his eyes. If anyone doesn't want to tango with me, then tell me. Where the fuck is Gato? Okay, so, interrogation isn't the best of talents for the blonde. He now stands in the middle of an ocean of blood. Covered in the red liquid himself, he just looks innocently around. His clothes drenched in blood, stuck on his skin also, but he didn't really mind. He was supposed to find out where Gato lived, but ended up killing all the mercenaries when he grew impatient by their fearful stammering. Naruto just stops his happy looking when his eyeline came straight at the kids. They looked fearfully at his eyes, cracked wide open in mad glee. He holds out his hand to them and walks forward in slow motion. The young children couldn't move even when their lives depended on it. They watched as the boy kept getting closer and closer. Death somehow taken the shape of a blonde hobo that can explode heads. Wait, I can tell you where he is. Please don't kill us. One boy, who was the one that checked on Naruto in the water, cried out. His brown hair covering one black eye. That one eye matched Naruto's crazy eye with fear. The blonde maniac laughed and started clapping. Wonderful. He stared at the kid for the longest time. The kid just gulped and pointed the direction. Gato's headquarters. I it's at the harbor. Naruto tilted his head to the side, cracking his neck and showing his confusion. 
He then tilted his head to the other side, making another side. Harbor. The boy nodded and Naruto just smiled at him. Thank you. He held back his snickers and then laid his hand on the boy's head. He lifted the boy's hair, making him cry out in pain. He then threw the boy to his friends. There, you don't have to walk to them anymore. He turned around, to the direction of the harbor. Do 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 do. Here he is men, the star of the show, the magnificently pathetic dirt of wave, Inari. A short pudgy man with one eye and a frazzy beard shouted out. All the men there, nasty and laced with liquor, cheered at the coming said boy. The boy has ragged clothes, comes to the center of the fenced area. Encrusted to the ground, is a wooden pole, which is distinctively colored red. Inari has brown hair, and really short. He has but one arm. His eyes were bloodshot red, due to crying too much. The fat man next to him petted the boy's hair. This boy here is a very special guest. Usurper of the village rebellion against our leader Gato. Like father, like son. Booing could be heard from crowd of bandits. All of them were sitting on the ground. Besides them were various women from the village, either naked or in clothes of the bandits choosing. The fat man chuckled. Oh, but don't worry. We have something planned for the little ruffian. Introducing a beauty of wave. Tsunami. The boy's eyes shot open and looked at the fat man in surprise. The fat man reflected the look with a glint in his eyes. Then, two men came with a beautiful woman with long navy black hair. She was naked as the day. Bruises were upon her face and various parts of her body. Her eyes matched the color of Inari's eyes for the same exact reason. Now that we have her actress we can begin her rape scene. Confusion and slight horror came upon the boy's face at the word, rape. The woman herself broke down into more tears. The fat man became ecstatic. All righty. The fat man walked to the front of the crowd. Any takers. A lot of bandits raised their hands for a chance to defile the woman. The fat man picked about seven men to come with him. One bandit even shoved his personal slave to the side. With the men accounted for, the fat man nodded and motioned for the actors to commence the scene. As the men were about to lay their hands on Tsunami, a voice was heard from the bandit crowd. Boo, this movie sucks, we need better actors, shit, just kill the fat ass, he's ruining the whole damn thing, said fat ass gritted his teeth and shouted to the crowd, who said that, who is the brute that ridicules my movie, a hand came up and waved it, it was me, me, no, not that fucker, me, everyone looked to the back at the crowd to see a blonde boy in raggedy clothes. The blonde was smirking and his eyes held an evil mirth in them. Inari was the first one to shout, Naruto Nisan. He couldn't believe it, the blonde was standing right there. Alive, he thought he was dead, as Gato stated when he captured him. But then, a dark feeling came over him. Where was he, I thought he abandoned us. The bandits looked from Inari to the blonde. The fat man smiled evilly. Naruto Nisan, E.H. He pointed his round chubby finger to the blonde. Anyone who kills this boy, will get a part in the rape scene. Naruto not wanting to pass this opportunity, raised his hand. I'll kill him. This made everyone sweat drop at the pure stupidity of that. One bandit closed his eyes. A stupid boy. His eyes opened and glared at the boy. He ran to Naruto with his club ready to smash his face in. Making fun of a ch. In a moment time seemed to slow. That moment, the only normal movement was the mouth edging up Naruto's cheeks as he cackled. His hair suddenly flowed more and went with the wind. His eyes lost a bit of insanity and holds a purity. The cracks on his cheeks greatly thinned and curled up into a spiral. He then closes his left eye and stops his insane laugh. The bandit suddenly stopped his charge and was spinning. Hey, what's going on? His body suddenly skyrocketed up into the air. Everyone looked up to see him falling up from the sky to the ground. The end result was his bones shattered and one bone could be seen popping out. Blood splattered on the floor the scene just made everyone sick to their stomach. Oh, praise Kami, he has soothed this pious soul into his sanctuary. The blonde's voice changed somewhat from slightly cracked to pure softness. The feeling he gave off now makes people a lot more comfortable. In fact, it was soothing. This new Naruto walked to the corpse and dropped to his knees. He put both hands together and closed his eye. One can hear a slight hum of prayer. 
The fat man's shock dissipated, and shouted to his contingent of bandits. Now, kill him while he's praying. This shout caused every bandit to charge. Inari had to close his eyes and look away. He's done for. Naruto just knelt there and pray. His humming never ceased. The armada of bandits kept charging, but few members stopped and then flew off into the air. They met the same fate as the first bandit that died. Soon, the numbers fell off and just nine bandits survived out of thirty. They all were about to kill the blonde, when a huge swirl of wind came around Naruto's knees. Then, he too skyrocketed to the air, where he outstretched his arms and opened his left eye. Glorious, he soon started to descend the skies and tilted his body to dive headfirst. Kami, give me your grace. Soon, he landed straight on ground floor. What he landed on became red and splurted everywhere. Turns out he landed on top of a bandit. His calm smile never left his face as the blood stuck onto his face. His arms outstretched to the shining sun. Now the gods will surely gift us with rain. He said to the clear sky. He put both hands together as he prays once more. Now I leave you all. Good souls. May God give everlasting peace. His spiral whiskers receded back into cracks. His eyes and smile gained back its maniacal visage. His hair now spikes back again. The blonde maniac cracked his neck both ways. The bones sounded hollow and it made the remaining bandits even feel it in their own necks. The fat man became quite scared of the boy's power. W hat are you? Naruto looked from his fingernails to the fat ass. Me, he smirked and cracked his knuckles making himself moan in delight. Why? I'm the fucking ice cream man you dumb bitch. The fat man pointed his finger at Naruto. Bullshit. You are fucking monster. A psychopath. You re a fucking demon. Naruto started bowing and smiling at the wonderful praise he was receiving. By now, the bandits who were left, ran off with their balls between their legs. The blonde slowly started walking to the fat man, who was by now shitting his very pants at this moment. I have to say. Those were the best things anyone could have said to me, wifey. He swiftly put his arms around the fat man's neck and whispered in his ear. Now for making me feel so good, it's time I return the favor. He put his hands on the mon's neck. Did you know I give the best massages? The fat man would have believed the boy, if the blonde didn't just kill most of his bosses' as men. Naruto just chuckled at the fat man's look. Oh don't worry. His hands started to vibrate. His smirk seemed to have been stolen from the devil. My massages are to kill for. Ha 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 ha. Inari almost had his lunch on the floor. That wasn't no massage, he thought as he saw his idol explode the fat mon's head. Then again, he was glad that the fat ass was gone and that the blonde saved him yet again. But this new Naruto scared him even more than Gato of all people. Naruto sighed in content when the headless man dropped on the floor. He dusted his hands and looked at the remaining people there. A bunch of female slaves. This made Naruto grin at them, scaring them even more than the bandits. The blonde raised an eyebrow and pointed at himself. What? You don't like me? He innocently asked. When he didn't receive a response at all, his eyebrow ticked. Well that sucks. He yelled at no one in particular. He then narrowed his eyes at them. Well you know what? Fuck off. I have no likes for men like you. This statement caused the women to run from the angry lunatic. When they were gone, Naruto cracked a grin and licked his lips. He clapped his hands and rubbed them together as he whispered in excitement. Now I get to ravage Gato all by myself. Woo woo. He pumped both fists out to the clouds. Then he heard a feminine sneeze and turned abruptly to the offender. He pointed at Tsunami. You, fucking bitch, stopped poisoning my air supply. He started to stomp over to her and raised his hand, motioning to slap her. Tsunami looked at him in fear and awaited the pain. Angry shouts from Inari were heard asking why the blonde is acting this way. Smack. Ha ha ha. I can't believe it. You just got sucked. Inari's eye twitched in disbelief that Naruto didn't smack his mother but instead smacked his knee and laughed at their faces. This made Inari close his eyes in irritation and have them open when he shouted. What the hell is your problem, Naruto Nisan? Inari, totally annoyed by Naruto, just yelled at him, What do you mean you don't know who I am? I'm Inari, you know, that kid you lied to about there being heroes in the world. Huh. 
A punch in the gut was Inari's answer. Blood was spilled from his mouth. His eyes narrowed in pain had to look into the mad gaze of Ocean Blue. The teen of the three whispered, Heroes. Never heard of it. Inari. A cry from Tsunami brought his attention to her. She ran to the boy and held him. She then glared at the whiskered boy before her. Naruto's smirk dropped and then he grabbed hold of his head. U R G. What the fuck? Random images appeared in his head for split seconds. There are no such things as heroes. And that class is why the Yondiame is a hero. Don't be a hero, Naruto. I wonder what's it like if they saw me as a hero. The images faded away, but a dark bestial voice lingers in his mind. A hero, Tsunami and Inari can only stare in wonder as the boy clutches head in agony. The blonde started to drop on his knees and punch the ground. The cracks were pulsating and his whole body started to vibrate. His teeth were clattering and soon he held his arms around in his knees. F fuck. ITS ko ld li like a w with chess w rin kali a s. Tsunami had to cover her son's ears at the foul language being displayed, but the boy's virgin ears has already been defiled. She glared at the blonde, but couldn't help feel a little pity for the shivering psycho. The blonde didn't know what he was feeling right now. His whole body just became an iceberg and worse is that he feels ever degree of it. A light bulb then cracked and exploded in his mind. Bingo. Tsunami and Inari saw the blonde went from shivering to rolling around the ground and flailing about. The boy slowed down and eventually stopped. He slowly stood up and then stretched his arms. Ah, stop. Drop and roll is such a useful counter for the cold. His hand went up to his hair and scratched it. Fuck. Big words confuse me. He turned around and looked at Inari. His smile turned into a smirk and then pointed at himself. Hey, faggot. You seem like a nice young brittle chap. Can you kindly tell me where in the fucking fucks is Gato sama san Sensei-chan? Inari glared up at him, anger swelling in his chest. What is wrong with you? You can't stand up to Gato. He killed your whole team. So why do you keep trying? A crazed eye met his own and the other eye was of purity. Because, you fucking shit. This world is full of sin. And I am the god that will cleanse it. His eyes seemed to grow more madness than ever and he laughed to the skies. The little boy just stood there watching in realization. You, you're crazy. You're not Naruto Nisan. He cried out as he charged the blonde. Where is he? What did you do to him? In his eyes are tears that his brother is no more. He pounded his fists on the blonde maniac and kept crying out as he pounded on the boy. Where's Naruto Nisan? Where is he? Why did he leave US? Tsunami's heart wrenched when she sees her son dropping to the ground crying his own heart out. Inari. She put a hand over her heart. You were so young and now you lost yet another person. Naruto just relished in his cries for this, Naruto Nisan. He just smirks and walked past the boy to Tsunami. He calmly crossed his arms and his smirk grew wider. Tell me mister, where does Gato fucking live? He calmly asks. The woman had to take deep breaths to stop sobbing at how her little boy is broken. She looks at the floor and points in the direction where Gato is. She didn't see the generous smile on his face before he dashes off. Even if she saw it, the moment would have been ruined when the blonde yelled out, put some fucking clothes on. Who knows when I'm going to be around. Inside Gato's hideout, there is a large room. Pillars are sectioned to the sides and a large spacing in the middle. A silhout of a man leaning against the wall is shown. Another silhout comes up to him. Brother, I think we need to talk. An angry scowl adorned Maizu's face as he turns to Guzu. He looks at his brother's solemn face. Yeah, what is it now? Guzu just sighed and took a deep breath. Well, I was just wondering about all the things we're doing. Maizu just scoffed and crossed his arms. The things his brother could whine about. He just felt like ramming this sword up his bro's ass. Yeah, what about it? His eyes then narrowed at his brother. Don't tell me you're getting soft on me. God damn it, you're just like that Haku bitch. So fucking goody goody. He marched over to his brother and poked his chest. Listen, we spent years with that fucking madman and we always get the short end of the stick when his precious tool gets the winnings. And now we're free. Free from that man and his bitch and now we have better lives. Guzu took the finger off his chest softly and pointed his finger on his brother's chest. He didn't want be the, the weaker one this time. Free, 
You call this freedom. It's just like before. We serve under a different man now. But this time brother, the man probably wants us dead. The brother with the big ass sword glared at Guzu. He doesn't dare do that to us. He then took out Kubikiri and laid it on his brother's shoulder. And don't question me. The same blood doesn't matter if it runs cold. Maizu Sama, a yell cried out, got their attention. Several bandits came through the door and were all panting. Their skins are deathly pale in somewhat fright. Maizu puts away his sword and takes a step forward, looking at their disheveled state. What is it? You guys look like you've seen the devil. One bandit gulped and took a deep breath. Ah, uh, if you saw what I saw, then you would think so too. Wah he 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 he. Just as Maizu and Guzu didn't think the bandits would get any paler, they were completely wrong. The bandits started to scream, it's him, and ran past the demon brothers. The brothers looked at each other and went to see who would scare these bandits so much. A smiling blonde walks to the spots a tall skyscraper on the dock. He happily giggles as he puts his hands behind his back and skip a little. Then, when he nears the building, he stops in his tracks. He closes his eyes and takes in all the air he can get in his mouth. Suddenly, he spins around like a twister and screams to the skies. Wah he 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 he. Naruto descends to the ground in a smooth motion, his hands outstretched and his eyes on the clouds. He hears the main doors of the building open and seconds later two figures enter his sight. One figure has a huge sword looks at the other figure. Tch, this is what made those asses leave. Fuck, let's just kill him. He takes his sword out and points it directly on Naruto's neck. He raises the sword and then thrusts it down. A huge crack appeared where it hit, but there was no Naruto to be seen. Maizu raised his sword and looked around. Where is he? Guzu Kalmi looks to the side, feeling ragged breaths on his neck. If he turned around, he would have seen face to face if a whack job. Said whack job just giggled. He he, you guys just tried to kill me. He rushed forward and reached his hand out to grab Maizu, but the ninja just shot out a chain to Guzu. The demon brother then pulled the chain and Maizu to safety. Naruto had to smirk at the chain. Whoa there baby, I'd love to see what you guys can do with that stringy ling. Guzu narrowed his eyes at the blonde and looked at his brother. This guy looks awfully familiar. I can't put my finger on it. Maizu just raises his sword and has a gleam in his eyes. I don't care if he looks like our father. I'll chop him to pieces. Guzu sighed as he released the chain to let his brother charge against the blonde. The boy wiped his eyes and charged at his brother as well. Maizu swung his sword in a horizontal swing, but the blonde jumped and landed on the sword. Oh, nice dildo. Where do you stick it? I stick mine in my ear. Maizu blanched, but put his gauntlet on the blade and scraped it to send spark at the blonde. Naruto flipped back and got into a fighting stance, which was one hand behind his back and the other on his crotch. Yikes, that almost shocked me. Don't worry, I didn't get hurt. What Naruto didn't see was Guzu preparing his claws to slice the boy's back. He thrust his hand forward, but time slowed like the other time at the harbor. The cracks on his cheek glowed whitish blue and shaped into zigzag lines. His pupils seemed to shine brightly and his hair got even spikier, gotten more luster, and points out to the sky. Time went back to normal. In one millisecond, he turned around and flashed behind Guzu. Fuck me. He started to look around statically and hops little. You fucker Sereslo. I'm bored. Yay. He ran in circles in lightning speed around Guzu and Maizu. Then, he started teleporting behind them in quick speeds of lightning. When he gets behind them he makes a humping gesture with his tongue out, which looks as sharp as a knife. Flash. Fuck you. Flash. Fuck you. Flash. Fuck you. Flash. And. Fuck you fuck you fuck you. He finishes with one final thrust. Everything he did was with a vulgar thrust in the air. He cackled at the disbelief on the brothers' faces. He stuck his tongue out and flashed behind Guzu. And fuck you, he lashed out his hand and electricity pumped out of his hand. The shocking projectile went straight for Guzu. Maizu just stood by, knowing that he could have deflected the lightning with his sword. His brother cried out in pain as he got shocked. His chest was hit and clothes were charred. Naruto raised an eyebrow and shot another lightning, but this time at Maizu. The demon brother deflected with his sword. Tch, tem, 
I'll lop his head off. Maybe I should try Zabuza's move. He threw his sword and it was sent spinning towards the blonde. Naruto just stared at the incoming weapon and a memory flashed in front of him. It depicted the same sword only it was in a forest. The figure behind the sword was blurred. The memory was gone and Naruto just smiled with electricity shining through his teeth. Ding dong. Fucky A with my ping pong. He flashed again and this time he was up in front of Maizu. His smirk right there up in the demon brother's face. Hey, you want to know my name? My name's Kick to the Balls. A kick indeed impacted on Maizu's nuts. The demon brother yelled out and dropped to his knees, holding his damaged goods. The blonde ninja thrusted to the air with vigor. Two points. Pop pop. Shing. Wu. Bondage people. What was once Maizu and Guzu on the floor, are both brothers with their chain entrapping Naruto. Maizu just smirked. Got him. Guzu hold him. The other brother nodded and held Naruto, while Maizu picked up his sword that dropped on the ground. The demon brother walked to the blonde. Ha <laughs> ha, no I recognize you kid, seeing you in chains and all that. You're that brat that got freezed up like a little bitch back in the forest with that team. No wonder you're so weak now. And since I killed that sensei of yours, there's nobody to stop me now. What was supposed to make Naruto angry, just made the boy stuck out his tongue like a panting dog. Woof. Guzu had to keep himself from snickering at his brother's face. Said brother was pissed that this kid turned the tables. He raised the kubikiri that shined in the light and yelled out, Dai Gaki. The light that bounced off of the sword blinded Naruto, which caused another memory to appear. The blurred figure from his past memory holds the kubikiri the same as Maizu did. The figure started to become clearer and the, the blonde finally saw who it was. Zabuza, crack, he yelled out as his hands vibrated, breaking the chain into pieces. His eyes immediately looked up to see the sword heaving down on him. His hand moved moved without an accord. Maizu expected blood from the boy's arm, but what happened made his eyes widened in disbelief. Naruto blocked the blade with his bare hand, and made several cracks along the blade nevertheless. The blonde moved the blade away and his hand made contact with Maizu's shoulder. An explosion of blood came from the demon brother. His arm flew off like a piece of paper in the wind. Maizu staggered back and fell to the ground, the kubikiri still in his hand. His shouts at his brother filled the air. Guzu, help me, said brother sped up to his brother's location. Naruto just stood with a smirk on his cracked face. His appearance changed back to normal. Another memory flashed, this time the figure stood where Guzu stood. The figure changed from Guzu to Hunter Nin San. Naruto greeted with his arms wide open, as if meeting an old friend. But the madness in his nose told different stories. Guzu crouched and picked up Maizu, while keeping a cautionary eye on the maniac. The blonde just stood there innocently tapping his foot as if listening to a techno beat. Guzu looked at Naruto, and then turned his head a little to Maizu. Brother, I think we should retreat. We are no match for him, especially when you're injured. No, Maizu yelled out as he roughly pushed away Guzu. He picked up his sword and charged at the blonde. This fuck thinks he could kill me. I have the kubikiri honcho. He swinged at Naruto, but the blonde ducked to avoid the blow. So fuck him. Another swing. Another ballerina twirl from ours truly. Fuck you. Guzu winced as the blonde dodged and countered with another explosion, this time on the other arm. Og. Maizu cried out as he dropped to the ground, only for Naruto to hold him by the throat. The boy smirked at the pain his victim must be feeling. Maizu opened his eyes and wanted to spit on the moi, if it weren't for the mask. Fuck you. Even if you kill me, you have nobody now. Your whole team is dead. And you have no sensei. Cuz I Maizu Oni killed the legendary cop. Splat. Blood covered Naruto's face as the mon's head exploded. The cracked boy licked around his blood and chuckled. His face in mad glee. Hum. Taste like blood. He stared at the corpse on the ground. Goodbye Zabuza Chan San. He turned to the other brother, who stood by in silent sadness. Fuck you looking at. It better be my sweet ass. Guzu just sighed in sadness as his arms rose to his sides. He looked up to the shining sun. His gauntlets slid off, revealing two clawed hands. The hands were charred black, as if burned and the tip of them were glowing orange-yellow. A fool to the end. He chuckled. 
That's my bro. Then, the sadness in his eyes were gone, and replaced with a fierceness. His mask then slid off, revealing flesh and teeth. The teeth was also charred black and his tongue was like the tip of his fingers. He stared at his brother's corpse and then to the blonde. Surprised. Probably not. But this is the defect bloodline that me and my brother had. We didn't know what power we had, but I don't think it was bloodline. I thought it was rape. Rape of the normalcy my brother and I will ever had when we have this. He lifted his cloak to reveal a burned body. His whole organs were shown. But one stuck out the most. A wriggling worm by the stomach. It was an ADAM slug. He chuckled bitterly. Naruto himself grinned with and lifted his brown cloak as well. Revealing a slightly bigger crack. Ooh look, we're slug buddies. Guzu just shook his head, and he ran straight toward Naruto. The blonde just stared at the incoming figure with a smile. A second later, nothing was in the psycho's view, except for the corpse on the floor. If he looked up, he would have seen a pitch black cloud in the air. Instead, he looked down to the sword on the ground. He laid his hand on it and picked it up. He tilted his head and raised an eyebrow. Huh, not my cup of shit, he offhandedly said, but continued to carry the sword. He walked to the main entrance of the skyscraper and looked up. His chuckles kept on going as he went inside. Eyes were widened in fear and some stood in pure shock in recognition. Walking calmly past the hallway filled of thugs and bandits, was the blonde ninja. A slight crazed smile on his face as he sees some men run in fear at him. A small cackle escaped his chapped lips when he spotted one man embarrassing himself by pissing his pants. The reason that they were so scared of this kid is because for one, this kid brutally massacred about a quarter of their forces. Number two, there is a huge ass sword in his hand. And number three, that big ass sword in his hands belonged to one of the demon brothers who would rather die than to let go of that sword. Naruto was kind of glad these guys weren't going to fight him. Not because he's tired, hell no, it's because he wants to kill only one person in Gato Industries. That's right, he wants to kill that random hobo in floor 3. But that would have to wait till later. Gato is his primary concern. But yet, all this time, he has no idea why. The mon's face and name just brings out pure hatred and anger from him. But that anger and hatred converts his mind into a more unstable state. He nears a door that intrigued him. Inside it was a closed space, but the walls were all metallic. He decided to go inside thinking, shiny. When he's inside, he looks around only to see a pad of buttons that seemed to have confused him. When he pressed one, nothing happened. He pressed again, nothing still happened. Of course, it's challenging me to a fight. If I beat it, maybe. He now tried punching it. Nothing happened. Now he took out his big ass sword. In times like these, this sword is always there for him like a mother hen. He lifted the sword with relative ease and thrust it inside the button pad, making sparks fly everywhere. Final fucking Lee, the room started to shake and the door closed. A laugh came from the blonde and his eyes started to turn bloodshot. Yeah, you motherfucker, that's how you do it in, in. Where does he live? Oh that's right, I'm a hobo and hobos don't live anywhere. He reasoned and calmed down after that. That's when the elevator stopped shaking and a voice came out of nowhere. It was a female and it sounded choppy. Welcome to the fifth floor. Hope you enjoy your stay in Gato Industries. A raised eyebrow was all Naruto did before walking out of the elevator. But in his mind, God, I want to fuck her. Terrified, that is the word to describe to what this girl is feeling. She lies here, clothless and shivering. It was ironic. Her bloodline is to control ice and she is shivering. But she knew even if one were to be ice itself, it would still shiver in her shoes. Here she lies, on Gato's bed. The man is nowhere to be seen, but she deducted that he is getting ready. Dot for her. The tension is killing her. She wished this never happened. She wished that she never took this job. She wished that the Chidori would kill her. She wished that she never lived. But Zabuza Sama is still alive. And that is all I need to live and endure, this. Knock knock. Oh no. The door opened to reveal Gato in all his glory. Well, lack of thereof. He now wears nothing but a white towel and a smug grin. Probably thinking that he now has his prize. That is what he thought. 
Ever since he laid eyes on this beauty, he wanted to fuck the living daylights out of her. When the girl told him she was a boy, he just couldn't believe it. But went giddy when the demon brothers told him otherwise. That was when he made the plan on the bridge. All for this one fuck that he will definitely enjoy. Licking his lips while the girl in front of him shivers even more. Ooh ooh ooh, such a scared little thing. Don't worry, when I'm done with you, you won't be feeling a thing. Dropped his towel he did. What it covered would have made Haku laugh if it weren't her it's going inside. Let's just say it was true that she won't be feeling anything. Then, Haku eeped as the short man leapt on the bed. He crawled over to her with an antagonizing slowness. She, on the other hand, is backing up hoping that there would be an endless cycle. But alas, she ended up backed against the wall. There was no escape as her hands were bound in chakra-sucking material. No. Images flashed before her eyes. Instead of Gato, there was her father. No. She heard the chuckles from the both of them and in the end, screamed out as his hands descended upon her. No, now, he could have sworn that he heard a door close. Then again, he swore too much of things. Fuck, where is that fucking door? Fuck fuckity fucking fuck. His cursing was interrupted when he heard a, knock knock, from around the corner. Yellow teeth shone as he cracks a grin, he runs around the corner to see the door close. He smirks as he slowly walks up to the door. He puts his head next to the door and listens. Ooh ooh ooh, such a scared little thing. Don't worry, when I'm done with you, you won't be feeling a thing. Not wanting his curiosity to be left unsatiated, he took out his kanai from God knows where. He then sticks a little hole in it, and watches what is going inside. First, he sees the man drop his towel. Ooh, sexy, he whispered. Then, the man leapt on the bed which there was a naked girl on it. For some reason, that girl seemed to have reminded him of somebody. Ah well, damn, this couple is just so cute. I should leave these two alone. He sighs happily and walks away from the door, ignoring the scream and the red icicles that popped out of the room. Damp, dark, and that annoying dripping that had to have landed on his pants. Momochi Zabuza now kneels with chains stuck to the wall. There are other people stuck with chains too. Only those people seem to have only have their bones left. On the other side of the room, are two guards playing cards with each other. One is loud as fuck. The other is a silent fuck. Both were fucks in his opinion. He winces as the loud fuck screamed at the silent fuck that he cheated. God, he wishes he had his kubikiri so he can lop both their heads off. Thinking of his treasured tool, he thought of the other treasure tool. Haku, he hoped she would be okay but that thought was thrown away as he heard his ex-tool mutter that Gato needed a new toy. The thought of that man made him bristle in fury. The tool that cut his hand. Guzu didn't seem to want to betray them, but couldn't betray his brother. If were it not for these chains, he would hunt Maizu like a dog. For now, he would wait. Wait for that one lucky moment to be finally free. To kill Gato, Maizu, maybe Guzu, and get Haku and get out of here and then going back to mercenary business, only this time, no scumbag is ordering them around. At that moment, he felt something. A shaking. Soon, the shaking got bigger and bigger. The cards on the fuck's table were falling off and the fuck's themselves got up. Both of them looked out of the door to see something wrong, but it seemed they didn't find anything. As the shaking got bigger like an earthquake, a crash came from the ceiling. When the smoke cleared, he sees a blonde-haired boy smirking with his palm on a tile floor. Zabuza narrowed his eyebrowless eyes. There was something about this boy. Wait, on the boy's face were crack-like scars. They were three of them on each side. Then an image popped into his head. That boy, Kakashi's student. Then, something caught his attention. In the boy's hand, was his Kubikiri Hauchu in all its glory. And he has my sword. That can only mean he defeated Maizu. And if he defeated Maizu, he probably killed Guzu. He then heard behind the boy with his sword, hey, what the fuck, who the fuck are you kid? It was the loud fuck. Zabuza knew that the fucks were fucked. When the loud one gritted his teeth at being ignored, he got out his hand axe and raised it. Oi, listen to me damn. He was silenced by one finger on his lips. The finger belonged to the blonde that is holding another finger on his mouth. Shish. You're too loud, 
I'm trying make this a badass situation and, splat, you're ruining it, so kindly leave sir. Yet, Naruto was talking to a headless man on the ground. When the loud fuck died, the silent fuck's eyes widened at the simple touch of the madman. His eyes hardened though and just threw a dagger at the boy. The boy just touched the dagger, shaking it and destroying it. He then ran and leapt at the silent fuck. He reached out and grabbed the silent fuck's head. Blood gushed out of the mon's neck and out his eyes came tears of blood. His head went out like an erupting volcano and blood poured out everywhere. During all this, the silent fuck's killer slowly stood up and picked up the kubikiri hauchu. There was red blood dripping down his face as he licked it. He then looked at the captured demon of the hidden mist. Well, well. He started menacingly, his smirk on his face and the look in his eyes that could kill and scare people at the same time. Quote dot dot dot, if it isn't my old buddy Gato. Zabuza just raised one, what the hell, did this kid just call him a fucking scumfuck? What, I don't know what you're on kid, but I'm not Gato. This made the blonde laugh in his face and the kid danced around. Ha ha ha, don't try to fool me, you bastard. I know what you did. Truthfully, he didn't know what this, Gato, did. He only knows that he has to kill him. So. He picks up the kubikiri, his smile evident on his face and his eyes growing more bloodshot. The sword was heavy for sure, but the blonde could pick it up like a twig. If you don't mind, Gato-san, he took a giant spin and swung at the chained up Zabuza. Die. Blood splattered throughout the walls. Zabuza Momochi's head separated from his body and flew to the ceiling. It connected and gravity pulled it to the ground. The demon of the hidden mist's body got even paler. And his last thought before dying was, now I can't. When it dropped to the ground, the silence in the air became more dense. If anyone was there, they would be killed of boredom, and probably Naruto. The sandy blonde hair shadowed his eyes, but didn't cover his bloodied smirk. And it definitely didn't cover his chuckles as he let go of the kubikiri and walked out of the room. Schlick, that was the tenth one. The tenth bastard to come near her, only to meet his end by her icicle. He hair covered her whole face. Only her eyes can peer through the threads on her head. She walked aimlessly around the building hoping to find her master, Zabuza Sama. Hearing footsteps, her eyes narrowed at the sound. Thinking it was another bandit that either raped her or wants to rape her, he prepared an icicle in her hand to stab the man. Just as she sees the slightest limb of the man, she quickly charged in her icicle almost to her victim. What she didn't expect was her cold weapon completely shattered beyond belief and a hand cam across her throat. Her body lifted and to the wall she went, her aisles closed as her back impacted the walls. Opening them slowly to see her counter-attacker, she sees a boy. Almost the same age as her, and somewhat the same height. Her attacker had blonde hair, blue bloodshot eyes, and jagged scars that looked like whisker marks. All these lovely features sparked a memory of a certain loudmouth ninja, which made her eyes widen. That boy. Flashbacks of the time they first met, and the time they fought. She especially remembered the time he went on a crazed, demonic rage and almost killed her if she hadn't escaped. Her reminiscence was over just as the boy spoke, well, well. Looks like we meet again Ga oh wait, you're a girl. Whoopsie. He released her throat and she coughed, rubbing her throat. He gained a significant amount of strength. She sees the boy raising an eyebrow at her appearance and has a grin on his face. Well hello there, I never thought I'd see a naked woman walking in a corporation. One word, cue a thumbs up, nice. Heat flushed on her cheeks and she felt like slapping him with a cold induced palm. She didn't know whether to be gratified or angry. Angry would work, so she settled on glaring at him. So, what's your name pretty lady? That question brought surprise from within her. He doesn't remember me, she looked at his expectant eyes. No. He doesn't, does he remember anything? My name is Haku, don't you remember me? An image of a shadowed figure came across his mind. A girl who tilted her head at him. He couldn't make out anything. So, he decides to, to do the first step. Denial. Nope. Haku narrowed her eyes in confusion. So you don't remember a bridge? A man named. Zabuza Sama, she got frantic. Do you know where he is? Naruto looked up at the ceiling and opened his mouth in remembrance. Wait, an image appeared. Wait, 
It showed something long. Wait, sleek, wait, shiny, got it. He reached out to grab her hand. The ice girl immediately flinched in response. She just weakly says, um, I'll just follow you. A grin appeared on Naruto's face. And those grins, usually don't come out good. Naruto was bored, picking his nose, he flicked some snot away. He then looked at his nails and wondered when this was going to end. What? This? Is? Is the morning of the demon of the hidden mist, Zabuza Momochi. The room that was once filled with silence, became a box of racked sobs. Haku, Zabuza's accomplice, openly cried on the headless body. This scene was so heartbreaking. Only Naruto would just roll his eyes. After about 20 menus of grueling torture, to Naruto, Haku stood up. She wiped away her tears, revealing ice-cold eyes. In the words of her sensei and master, emotions were supposed to be killed. She had failed to uphold them just now, and she vows to never fail her master again. Her eyes trailed down to her master's most sacred tool of all, even above her. She was jealous of this tool. The tool that Zabuza can always depend on. The one that can kill with no emotion at all. The Kubikiri Hauchu. Her hand shakily went out to reach for it. She feared what might happen if she so much as even touched it. All sorts of images of her brutal death happened before her eyes until she felt it. It was cold, but, it held warmth. She could feel it, the warmth of her master. She imagined where he put his hands and she too did so. With a slight grunt she pulled the sword off the wall. The Zanbeitu immediately went on the floor with Haku still holding. She closed her eyes and mustered up all her strength to lift the sword, but continued to fail. So she settled on holding just the handle and letting the blade drag on the floor. She looked at the other person in the room. Her eyes met his. Naruto looked on as she met his gaze. When she broke it and went out the room, he saw something in that cold gaze of hers. Something that sparked something inside him. His hand reached up to his chest in wonder. Was this what they call, a revelation? In a forest, the girly boy closed his eyes and smiled at the knucklehead. If you truly want to become strong, then you must protect your most precious person. To become strong, you must protect your precious person, he repeated in his mind. And then, out of his mouth, came his epiphany. To become stronger, that precious person must die. Outside of the Gato Industries, Naruto walked out of the building finally. What greeted him was Haku standing there with the Zanbeitu. The blonde raised an eyebrow. Is she standing here to admire the scenery? She did admire the scenery. Well, she marveled at the brutality of Maizu's corpse. She turned her head to him, and what she did next, kind of surprised him. This made the blonde step back once and held out his hands. Whoa there, no need to get hasty. I mean, come on, I'm not even Pope yet. Haku still had her head bowed. You killed Zabuza's killer. For that, I am grateful. You have done what I wanted to achieve. You are powerful, as much as Zabuza Sama perhaps. I want to follow you, Naruto kun. I want to be your most precious tool of all. So please, use me as much as you wish. She did not mean that sexually. But our blonde had a totally different idea. Score, mission complete. Slave acquired. When Haku stood up, she smiled at him and said, So, ready to leave Gato Industries. Now that, made a blank in Naruto's mind. Whoa, wait a fucking minute. You mean there is a whole industry that is named Gato? Receiving a nod, he asked where that industry is. When she pointed where it is, which was the building they just got out of, he slowly turned to see big fat blaring letters of Gato on the building. His eyes developed a certain mad redness to them and his smirk turned into a frown. He flexed his fingers while waking to the front of the building and stopped. He then raised on end, and just dropped it to the ground, making the area shake. Haku felt a rumble and had to wonder what her new master is doing. Cracks developed around the building and the shaking intensified. One could hear yells and shouts from the building. Then, the building descended and soon it sunk. Sunken into the sea of dirt and rubble. Naruto just breathed in contempt and cackled as he stretched. When he stopped giggling, he sauntered past a bewildered Haku. The girl was honestly surprised what her new master did. What was that? That power. It's more than I, or even Zabuza-sama, can hope to achieve. Naruto Sam truly is strong. This brought a smile from her face. Naruto-sama, 
That's a nice ring to it. Both master and servant were walking on a destroyed bridge. Memories came upon Haku of this bridge. She had hoped both of them would leave this place as quickly as possible. That hope was tarnished as the blonde stopped by the edge of the bridge and rubbed his chin. The female of the duo looked around to see if anyone was there other than them. Finding no one, she figured that Gato's group probably scared the villagers into their homes. She heard a, ha ha, and turned to the hobo. The blonde turned to her with an uncharacteristic look of coldness. She then heard the words that held no emotion but a tone that would threaten to kill her. Even though you're pretty and shit, I want you to know that following me into the water will cause me to scream and kill you, understand? Haku nodded at that. She felt a bit scared at how the boy is so. Dot not the same. But. He is my new master. And I will follow him to hell if I must. Her thoughts were broken by a splash and she sees that her master leapt off the bridge. Thinking that she is going to wait a while, she set down the kabikari and sat on it. Slam. Instead of closing the metallic vault door, he decided to do the easy way, which was considered the hard way. He smirked as he turned around. He decided to make another hole in the submarine and go into a different location. What he saw was a kind of botanical forest. There were fruits along the branches of trees and in bushes. Naruto walked through the trees. There was an essence that calmed him. Normally, he would have burned these trees to hell as he has a tree phobia. But then again, he ain't fucking normal. At the end of this forest, he spotted the biggest of them all that reaches the ceiling. The wood was an orange red color, and the leaves were a brilliant turquoise. One would say this tree is weird and stupid. Others would fuck that one up. There was a door shaped hole on the front. Above the hole, there are letters carved in it, saying, skill. Naruto cracked his knuckles and smirked. Thinking that the tree was saying he has no skill, he decided to prove it wrong. With a war cry, he ran smack dab into the inside of the trunk. Spinning around his v-zone went a bit blurry. When he stopped, he sees something weird. A metallic arm-like object connected with the tree came in front of Naruto. Just as Naruto was about to insult and destroy the thing, it swiftly connected with his forehead. Fuck, was the only thing that came out of his mouth as his vision turned black. Blackness, it was dark, nothing is seen, silence filled everything. W where am I? That was the first thought that came to his head. His mind became rattled with questions when the darkness turned brighter. It turned a lot brighter with when a light filled his eyes. He raised his hand to stop the rays from assaulting his eyes. When he figured it was time to see what was going on, he dropped it. In amazement and awe, his bright blue eyes widened and his mouth was ajar. In front of him was a wall filled with lights. The lights were of a variety of colors, but there were three main segments. Blue, green, and brown. Each segment went from the floor to almost the ceiling. The lights were mainly in spheres and there were drawings in each of its spheres. There is also one extra segment to the side, which is the normal wall, but has lights as well. At the bottom of the wall, there is a horizontal bar going from left to right. To the left of it are the letters, express. To the right of it are the words, level up. On top of the bar, was the number 18. In the bar, was another bar that was yellow and almost filled the bar. Music filled his ears as well. It sounded weird, like in another language and it sounds really old. He didn't know where to came from, but then he found this stool with a disc and a huge horn. He wondered what was going on. Here he was in a strange room alone when the last thing he remembered was seeing his teammates. He narrowed his eyes at the memory. That dreadful memory, his dug his nails inside his palms when he thought of his crush, sensei, and rival. Sakura-chan, Kakashi-sensei, Sasuke. These three were his, were his. Do you have any precious people to protect? That's what they were, his precious people. But who said that? Who said those words that changed his ninja way? That was when he remembered who it was. The absolute fuck that killed Sasuke. The one who caused the death of his precious people. Haku. He whispered out in great venom. The name that sent chills down his spine, yet leaves a bad taste in his mouth. He heard something drip on the floor and looked at it. The source where it came from was his hand. He didn't realize that he cut his hand that deep. Foo foo, I see that you are awake. Naruto looked to where that sultry voice came from. His eyesight stopped at that, that, goddess before. She was absolute divine. 
Her crimson hair fell all the way down to her hips. Her eyes were both a violet blue. Her ears were rather long and pointy, and her smirking teeth were a little too sharp. Her clothing consisted of, well nothing. That certain aspect of her caused Naruto to look away with a nosebleed and a blush. But when he turned away, he sneaked a peek at her D-cup. He felt truly embraced when he saw something bulging out his orange jumpsuit, right between his legs. That's when he heard the woman chuckle. There is nothing to be so ashamed of boy. The said boy got out of his embarrassment and yelled, shush shut up. This is just new, that's all, and who or hell you? Where am I? Somehow, that grin on the woman's face just brought a light and dark feeling in his chest. The woman just walked forward, her hips swaying and grabbing the blonde's attention. When she stood in front of him, he wondered what was she going to do next. He got his answer when she bent down and started to lick his, dot his, blood off the floor. The sight made Naruto raise both his eyebrows and his heart began racing. The woman made a moan of ecstasy that made Naruto bite his lip. When the blood was licked away, she stood up. He could see that he was shorter than her by a head and a half. Looking at her face up close, he could see that she too had whisker marks on her cheeks as well. That info made him want to ask who she was again, when the woman spoke, who I am is none of importance. Well that plan went down the drain, if you want to refer to me by something, then you could call me Oka-san. What the fuck, as to where you are, we are in your mind. In his mind, yeah, Naruto scratched his hair and nervously laughed. Ha ha, right, I'm just going to go now and... As he turned around to get out of this crazy place, he had to stop as the same woman appeared before him. This made him jump and look to where she was before and back again. She's fast, he thought as he looked at her face. The woman in front of him gave him one of the most bone-chilling stares he has ever seen. She tilted her head and raised an eyebrow. Might I ask where are you going to go? Shit, he hadn't thought of that. He was just going to go wherever direction he pleased and hope that's it. Also, he might not go if that woman want it. She was faster than Kakashi. Not having an answer, he just put his head down. That ws when the woman chuckled again. I see, well, you don't have to go. You could just stay here to keep me company, or. His head lifted up in in wonder. Or, or what? She grinned and licked her lips. The darkness in the room covered her maleficent gaze on his soul. Are you just pick a skill? What the fuck? The blonde narrowed his eyes at her. Was she fooling him? A skill? What the fuck does that mean? Not even realizing it, he shouted out that last question. But he didn't care. He pointed at the woman. Fuck this. I want to know for real. Do give me this bullshit. Where am I? What the fuck do you mean by picking a skill? And just who the fuck are you? There was tense silence after his screams filled the air. The only thing that was heard was Naruto's breathing and that blasted old music. The red-haired woman looked calmly at the younger one in the room. She said, if you really want those questions to be answered, then I will give them to you. She started walking to him. Where you are, I already answered that. The blonde tried to see if she was lying again. Those, skills, I mentioned as your purpose in those place. You are to pick one of these in order for your outer self to get stronger. Then, tails started to sprout from behind her. Nine of them were flailing about wildly. As to who I am. She stopped on front of him. His eyes widened in shock as he figured out who she was. He looked at her as all the lights turned red. She raised up her arms and her smile widened when she heard the boy whisper. QB. The woman, now known as QB, nodded slowly. The whiskered blonde stared at her in relative silence. A few seconds later. Bullshit. After that, a laugh came from the blonde as he held his gut and pointed at her. Ah ha, no way, I can't believe it, so you mean that Konoha was beaten by a girl? Ah ha ha ha, priceless. During all the laughter, QB just stared blankly at him. That feminist comment didn't seem to phase her at all. When the laughter did stop, Naruto wiped away a tear or two. Seeing the noise stop, QB decided to speak. Believe what you will. But your purpose must be decided when the time comes. That confused the blonde. Wait what? My purpose? The red-haired woman nodded. Yes. She lifted her hand to point at the colorful wall. This is a skill tree. Your skill tree. 
she vanished and reappeared by the wall. She traced her fingers on the green color. This is the cyclone trap branch. Naruto remembered that, it was that plasmid he took. He continued to listen as she explained that the brown one was Geoquake and the blue one was the Electo Bolt. She then pointed at the bar below. This is your experience bar. When it fills up, you level and get a skill point. You use a skill point to use a skill. Naruto nodded, understanding a bit of what's going on. But something on the wall caught his attention. What are those? QB looked at where he was pointing at. The gray section of the wall. Those are your skills to power up. Increased strength, endurance, and speed. It seems you got all of them except one. Communication. That caused Naruto to wonder. Communication. The QB closed her eyes and nodded. Yes, that is when the inner self can communicate with its outer self. You are the inner self. Hold on. Are you saying that my body is being used by another person? He yelled out. She shook her head. No, but with all these skills, your outer self diverted away from being sane. It has no memory except your name, but it seems to have acquired some and it's jumbled. Naruto widened his eyes when he caught something. Wait, is my outer self insane? His worry grew when she nodded. He started to panic and then gulped when he asked. So, what did it do while I was? The QB shrugged, I have no idea, I am not in with communication with him. But I can feel his insanity and what he remembers. Naruto looked down on the floor at that. So, I'm stuck here, for the rest of my life. It took a moment for QB to answer, but she did. Yes. He could feel them, the tears running down his cheeks at the thought of staying here. Now he can't become Hokage. He can't go back to Aruka sensei nor Gigi. He was all alone. Kyuubi stared on as Naruto cried silently and just laid on the floor. Instead of feeling sorry for him, she started to smirk. And her smirk grew wider when her container screamed in agony. She then noticed something when the floor beneath Naruto started to shine. So, his outer self is awakening. Being on a bridge alone can really be boring. It can lead to many things. It lead to Haku wishing that something interesting would happen. But alas, she sighed as she put her hand on one cheek. Hearing footsteps she looked to the side at who was coming. She put one hand on her sword to prepare at who was coming. She would have seen them by now, if there wasn't any mist on the bridge. But what she can see is four silhouettes. Her hands gripped around the sword when the figures were clear to see. Those masks. She looked on in slight fear. Anbu. And from the headband. Konoha. Are they here for Naruto-sama? The four of them noticed the girl sitting on the big sword. One of the Anbu in a deer mask whispered to another in a dog mask. Oi, isn't that sword? The lizard mask one nodded, hearing the man. Yes, the Kubikiri Hauchu. It's supposed to be in possession of Zabuza Momochi. The hawk mask remained silent as the deer mask kept whispering. So where is he? I don't sense a henge. The dog mask tilted his head. Don't you pay attention to the Big O book recently? Zabuza has an accomplice with him. Th's girl must be it. Excuse miss. The lizard Anbu called out to Haku. The girl looked at him and tried to feign an act, while standing up. Um, yes sir. The Anbu narrowed his ease in suspicion, already seeing through the act. But he too kept the nice guy act. I was wondering if you saw this boy. He held up a picture. Haku mentally widened her eyes. It was a picture of Naruto. Should I tell them? They might help him. She was about to open her mouth, when she felt something wrong. Wait, this feeling, it's really bad, and it's coming from them. No sir, I never saw him. There was a silence for a minute that had Haku worry. But she could have sighed in relief as the lizard man nodded. Okay, thanks anyway. He signaled out to the others. Let's go. The Anbu squad were walking away except for one. The hawk mask. His eyes just stared coldly at the girl. Hold it. His voice rang out. It was as unhumane as his eyes peered through his mask. The Anbu stopped, while the lizard man smirked. Haku now had sweat dripping down her face. Shit. Does he know? Of course he does. She put both hands behind her back. The hawk mask walked forward taking out his sword. You say you don't know him, yet your eyes say a different story. Also, your hand twitched when you saw the picture. So, tell me, where is Uzumaki Naruto? Haku gulped. She was caught. 
and there was no guarantee that she would defeat a whole Anbu squad by herself. But, she thought, I must prove myself for Naruto-sama. Her hands quickly went into hand seals as Hawk thrust his sword into her stomach. Instead of blood, water came out of the wound. Mizu Bunshin, she is Zabuza's accomplice, Hawk concluded. Hawk, behind you, the Anbu turned around hearing his comrades shout and had to jump away to avoid a swing from the girl Zanbeidu. Haku cursed as her body suddenly went with her sword. She staggered to gain enough balance to stand. But the Anbu didn't leave her enough time when Deer threw some shuriken at her. Haku used all of her strength to lift up her sword and turned it to deflect the projectiles. Lizard decided to use this time to use a jutsu and did some hand seals, futon, wind cannon jutsu. He outstretched his hands and wind from behind him started to go in the direction he's facing in great speed. The wind contacted the Kubikiri and Haku was sent back to the floor. She closed her eyes as the sword was on top of her. I can't use this, she decided. I'll use this, later. Haku pushed the sword away and stood up. She looked at all of the Anbu and closed her eyes. I don't think, I can take them. She opened her eyes slowly. But, I must. Deer gulped as he saw the look in her eyes. Holy shit, those eyes are the same as Hawk's. With both hands free, she started to do hand seals. Hyoden. Ice Needles Jutsu. The mist in the air started to condense and soon there were multiple ice needles in the air. Haku then put both hands on the ground. When she did that, the needles shook and went straight for the Anbu. Hawk, Lizard, and Dog all escaped the needles by jumping out of the way. But Deer wasn't as fortunate as his whole arm was acupunctured. Ah, son of a bitch. Deer closed his eyes in pain, but soon opened them in fury. You bitch. He charged at the girl, ignoring Lizard and Dog's cries. Deer took out his sword and swiped to let out his hatred. But Haku just dodged them all without much effort, wondering if this is an Anbu. Arg, stop dodging and die. Haku ducked the horizontal swipe and picked up the Kubikiri and spinned. The huge sword would have cleaved Deer in half, if it weren't for three swords blocking the sword. Dog. Lizard, and Hawk all held their swords up, blocking against the blade. Dear, Hawk stated, your excess emotions have proved to be a burden, has it not? Deer stammered, uh, yeah. Hawk turned his head so his eyes stared at the fearful ones of Deer. And you know what Danzo Sama said about emotions. Deer looked up in wonder. Yeah, he said to Ki, his eyes widened. Wait, no. Schlick, Deer's head came clean off and blood geysered everywhere. Hawk stood behind him with his sword red with blood. He turned around and looked Haku's surprised eyes with his unemotional ones. Now, you next. He disappeared. Haku widened her eyes as she felt someone behind her. If she would have turned around, she would see a gleam in Hawk's eyes. Die. As he sent his blade forward, the ground beneath them started to shake. Soon, under Haku it began to crumble, until a hand shot out and grabbed her fore. The floor crumbled and Haku fell into the calm waters under the bridge. After the shaking stopped, Dog looked at Lizard and vice versa. What the hell was that? Lizard was about to speak, when another quake happened. This time the ground under Lizard shook. But before it crumbled, Lizard jumped away, just in time to avoid the hand. The hand didn't go back though. It grabbed the nearby floor and its owner pulled up. When he did, Hawk's eyes widened just a margin. So he's here. The blonde figure rose up. The Anbu looked at him as all three recognize him by the color of his hair. Uzumaki Naruto. A smirk appeared on the blonde's face. This smirk fit well with the scars and eyes. Hello bitches. Dog was a bit creeped out by the boy. Lizard looked on without emotion, but Hawk stared with a look that didn't fit him. The look of revenge. Demon, Hawk stated, out of the blue. Naruto raised an eyebrow and tilted his head. Who me? I'm a demon. He cackled. I like that name. Demon. He looked up in ecstasy. That fits me so well. Hawk took one step forward. He put his bloodied sword in position. I'm glad that you see it that way. I would think that you would retaliate with a rambunctious outcry. The blonde had his chapped mouth agape. Say wa woo hoo hoo. Nice, he yelled barely dodging the metallic object from lopping his head off. Then he heard. Sweden. Double dragon jutsu. Both lizard and dog cried out. 
Two water dragons came out of both hole that Naruto created. The dragons then came straight towards Naruto. Instead of dodging, he ran straight toward the dragons and held his hand out, laughing all the way. His body then compacted with the water beasts and he came out unharmed, but wet. He jumped in the air and fell towards both Anbu. They both jumped back to avoid his hands and when he landed, they attacked with their swords. Naruto jumped back as well, only to get stabbed from Hawk. The blonde can hear the man whisper, for Danzo-sama. Danzo-sama, Naruto thought as he looked up. I wonder, his mouth twisted in a smirk. He grabbed the sword and shattered it. He pushed his body out of the remaining sword and turned around. He then crouched down and put his hand on the ground. Jan Ken Po, he yelled and outstretched his arm behind him. He felt something and used his power. Lizard, that was whose head was blown to chunks. Naruto immediately ran to dog next. Just when his hand was about to kill him, a sword went through his body. The blonde coughed out blood as he looked down to see a bloody blade. It seemed that deer was useful for something. Hawk said, dog, eliminate the demon. The other Anbu complied and used his sword to stab the boy in the heart. For lizard, you demon. Life slowly faded away from Naruto's eyes. W wa, he whispered, what the fuck? Blood seeped out his mouth and more blood came out his wounds. I can't. Dog die here. He didn't know why he shouldn't, but he felt he had a purpose. I can't die. His body soon became cold and limp. I, in the deep recesses of the crazed mind of Naruto, the other blonde looked around as alarms began blaring. What? What's happening? He looked at the skill wall to see that all the spheres that were activated began to fade and yellow part on the bottom rapidly decreased, and the number 18, became 17, then 16, and so on, until it hit 1. Naruto was seriously confused and got even more confused as the three words appeared on the skill wall. And not just the wall, but all the walls. The floor and the ceiling included. Naruto held his head as it started to hurt. What the fuck is happening? He screamed as he looked at the three words. The end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.